Well, a letter of demand for a group from a group of individual citizens led by uh, Dr. Nkhopozi J.J. Tabani and uh, Mr. Lokona Mguni and the New Nation Movement, NPC, has uh, been sent to the Deputy Speaker, Lechesa Zenoli, of the National Assembly, uh, this to prevent the holding of the ballot schedule to take place tomorrow, which due to the allocation of members will most likely result in the election of Ms. Mapisa Nwakula as the Speaker of the National Assembly. Well, on this, we are now joined on the line by political analyst, Okonam Guni. A very good afternoon to you, sir. Thanks so very much for joining us here on uh, SABC News. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you for having us, uh, uh, Flo. All right, let's, let's talk about your reasons for going through uh, legal channels to make sure uh, that, the, that the speaker should be voted by way of a secret ballot. And I think it's also quite important as well, if we can discuss what is yours and J.J. Tabani's interest in this matter to the extent of you going the, the legal route. Absolutely, Flo, and I think what's important is to address our interest. One, we are citizens of this country before anything else. And we have seen numerous times our democratic institutions committing errors that have either been attempted to be rectified by the courts of law, if you look at the various uh, judgments that have come out, uh, lambasting how Parliament dropped the ball from time to time. You have also heard flow from the Zondo Commission of Inquiry uh, as to how Parliament did not play its oversight role and all of that. So as citizens who are plugged into the political life of this country, uh, when we had a conversation, uh, myself, uh, uh, Dr. Nkhobudze Tabane, uh, with the New Nation Movement and other people uh, that may not be cited in that letter, it became apparent to us that uh, we probably need to register our names in the name of democracy to say we want to caution Parliament from embarking on an action that could in actual fact be the weakening of that institution. And Flo, if you read that letter, our first point of caution is that the president, when he was reshuffling his cabinet, he made it expressly clear that Ms. Nosifuwe Mapisa Ngagula would be deployed elsewhere. It means that the head of the executive already had a destination in mind for a failed minister that he was firing from his executive and was clearly deploying him to the body that must hold his executive accountable. And that is the National Assembly uh, to the position of Speaker of the National Assembly. And we are saying that that on its own, he conflated his role as president of the country and the ANC, and it's tantamount to meddling with the business of the legislature, which should hold his government accountable. All right, a number of issues then to address here, Mr. Mguni. So uh, the Constitution talks about, you know, what's in, play, what's in place if there's only uh, one candidate, um, that the person presiding must declare uh, that candidate elected. But if, if more than one candidate is nominated, vote must be taken at the meeting by secret ballot in any case. So if there is contestation, it would have been by secret ballot in any case. Are you implying uh, that there was an agenda to make sure... Uh, that there was only one candidate and that it is then in fact that is in fact uh, uh, nominated because if there were more than uh, one candidate it would be by secret in any case just talk to me about what you're going with legally here well the the, 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 the position is quite clear in the sense that um, had there been uh, another person nominated and we don't know if there will be another person nominated so that will be the work of opposition parties by yeah. the way yeah. uh, to embark on flow and that is why the issue of the secret ballot uh, really comes in as the last bit uh, a last point of resort in our demands and that would really be to say uh, parliament should test the confidence of the the incoming speaker uh, from across the board of all its uh, uh, members in parliament. But as you are saying, yes, the schedule in terms of elections is uh, pretty clear as to what should happen. But the parliament should be able to say, well, we have somebody who has been confirmed by way of a ballot uh, that indeed uh, they enjoy the confidence of the House. Because our suspicion is that given how this nomination was an imposition even on the ANC itself, uh, where 
its own processes were not followed, by the way. Mm. And that's why the acting spokesperson, the ANC caucus, in one platform said uh, this was just the desire of the top office bearers, which was being imposed on the ANC caucus in parliament. And of course, that, uh, if you go to some judgments that have been there, such as the one of the secret ballot uh, on the motion of no confidence on the then president Zuma on the UDM metaverse as the speaker of parliament, the constitutional court made it clear, Flo, that because just because political parties deploy members to parliament, once they've taken the oath of office, they must be allowed space mm. to perform their duties. But here we are seeing, again, meddling and interference with the duties of parliamentarians. Yeah. You know, the, the issue of imposition is, is, is neither here nor there for me. I don't know who's, who's saying that uh, this person was, was imposed. But here's another thing. You know, so some might say that you know, the ANC, in any case, has, has a majority. So a secret ballot would have been uh, irrelevant due to the fact that members do tend to vote as they would have been instructed. And of course, you'd remember, uh, Mr. Mguni, when we saw this happening uh, with the public a protector, for example, where some might have been uh, against uh, voting, but uh, others, well, they ended up doing so because that's how, uh, indeed, they were instructed. And there is this view that the ANC wouldn't, in any case, vote as they are being instructed to. So my, one might say, even if it's secret, so what? It's going to turn out the way that they wanted it to turn out anyway. But what we remember from August 2017 is that when a secret ballot was eventually granted on the motion of no confidence against former President Zuma, in fact, ANC members, some, those who were in disagreement, were now at liberty to register that disagreement. I think we were looking at uh, just over 40 votes that actually disagreed uh, at the time. So the point is that it is not automatic any longer in actual fact uh, that ANC members will always be in one voice. and. That is exactly the point of affirmation, that even ANC members must be able to have an opportunity to disagree with decisions of their own political party if their consciences do not accord or if how they understand their oath of office do not accord with an imposition that is being made by the ANC on their work as members of parliament. You, you also make the assertion there, quite importantly, in your legal documents uh, that Mapisa uh, Ngakula may not in fact be fit and proper for the role of speaker. Why do you say this? Oh, absolutely. I think oh, there, there is a litany of issues that we can look to. Uh, if you look at how she has abused her powers at times as Minister of Defense, uh, giving people, uh, you know, uh, lifts, uh, one case uh, that involved a family person, uh, one case involved ANC de uh, delegation to Zimbabwe, which was reprimanded by the president and the ANC uh, demanded to pay back that money to the state. But Flo, there's also something more important that we allude to in the letter is that the Joint Standing Committee on Defense uh, intends on instituting an inquiry into her tenure during uh, her tenure as Minister of Defense, where there is allegations of corruption and mismanagement in how she performed her duties. Uh, there's a, an amount of about five million rands that the Joint Standing Committee on Defense uh, intends on actually interrogating. You will know that uh, there were even serious questions asked about the procurement of certain medicines uh, from Cuba that were flown into the country. And uh, I'm also well informed that the Rules Committee is not happy at how she conducted herself and how uh, she would respond late to the written questions by parliamentarians to her department. So this is somebody uh, whose name has lots of clouds on and she still has something to answer for to committees of the House that she's now being asked to be its leader. Yeah, and just in closing, I mean, uh, it's just interesting uh, to me just to find out, you know, if, if the legal route was the only route uh, available uh, to you. I mean, what other channels did you use in terms of addressing uh, your concerns before going this way? Well, I mean, uh, available to us as mere ordinary citizens flow is our Twitter accounts where we can make noise on social media, yeah. uh, our radio platforms, though, uh, because I also have the privilege of being able to host a show. Uh, you register your opposition and you tag members of the party and so on. But that really amounts into noise uh, more than anything, which is easy to ignore. So we are hoping that uh, showing intent 
uh, to review this decision if it goes ahead and she's elected as uh, Speaker of the National Assembly might uh, plug a bit of conscience, if not uh, much at all, into the ANC and maybe they might be able to reconsider that indeed uh, the process, one of first of all, has been flawed, but also the individual that they are putting across does not inspire confidence to the public. Mr. Bugunni, thanks very much uh, for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you, Flo. All right. That's Lukonam Guni, political analyst and uh, talk show host, speaking to us there about uh, the case that they are making about the secret uh, ballot vote uh, for the National Speaker of uh, the Assembly. All right.